you're here. I feel like the God, God has something for us today. We have been in a series all this November and a little bit of October talking about, what are we talking about? Ooh. There, what are we doing? There, there it is. Thank you. Rooted in glory through spiritual disciplines. Y'all didn't know it was a pop quiz today, did you? Mm-hmm. Where your notes? Get your notes out. That look, look. You know, I got my notes. All right. Uh, what's, some, what's some spiritual disciplines we've already talked about? Simplicity. Submission. Uh-oh. Prayer. Oh, nah, wait. Don't give them the quiz. This is a quiz. Put that on. Y'all better be glad Mike like y'all, Y'all, y'all got the cheat sheet. That, this was a quiz. Go take that off. <laughs> okay, thank you. Purpose. You can take it off. Thank you. Good job. Good job. So you never know. I'm going to see if, if y'all are paying attention or not. Yes, we are talking about intentionality in our faith. How we can be rooted. Rooted is different than being shallow and being easily plucked up and easily blown about by any wind of doctrine or doubt. How many people want to be rooted? Like, I'm ready to be planted. I want to know that I know that I know. I want to be unmovable. I need perseverance. That's a prayer we don't pray a lot. God, give me perseverance. We usually pray, God, get me out now. I need out immediately. But sometimes God is growing in us Perseverance, tenacity, stick to itiveness. Sometimes that's what God is growing in us, especially in these trying times. And there is more to come. Amen. Y'all know it's things are things are progressively turning. So uh, we got to have some fo folks of faith who know who they, what they know and who they serve and why they serve. We need to be intentional. Amen. So that's what we've been doing. We've been talking about being rooted, being rooted, being rooted. Um, so as we start today, I wanted to remind y'all about uh, somebody. In uh, 2004, there was a young prophet by the name of Usher Raymond who released part two of a song that shocked and surprised us all because in that song, he declared... These are my confessions. My God. He, he, oh, and we were shocked and amazed. We was trying to figure out who he talking about. He talking about Chili. We was, ooh, we was trying to put it together. Lord, what is Usher talking about? But you know, our, our brother Usher, he was right on point. He was right on point. And you know, a lot of us in our lives have to have a Usher moment. All right, we have an usher moment, and this is what we're talking about today, the discipline of confession. Y'all ready? The discipline of confession. Now, don't get scared, don't get tight. We ain't gonna ask you to come with the mic. It's your time to practice. Come for it. Don't, don't get worried, that's not what, y'all loosen up. Everybody smile, take a deep breath. Y'all just hang with me, hang with me. We're talking about being rooted in confession. And we're going to start with that first slide. Uh, we're gonna, our, our main scripture today is coming from Psalms, Psalms uh, 32. And this is a really good psalm. It says, while I kept silent, my body wasted away through my groanings all day long. This is what happened when he kept silent. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the summer heat. Selah. That means stop and think about it for a minute. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Take a minute and think about it. Selah. Amen. May the Lord bless God's holy word. Now you can show the cheat sheet of disciplines. 
So these are the disciplines we've been talking about. There's inward disciplines, there's outward disciplines, and then there's corporate disciplines, right? Take a picture, take it with you, put it in your heart. So this is something, something was a little off about this to me. I was like, I have questions. Because what we're talking about today is confessions, and it's listed under corporate disciplines. In my logic, I'm thinking, okay, confession, that's definitely inward. That's definitely something that's, you know, it's just between me and God. I'm going to confess my sins. Uh, I know that God con- con- forgives me personally. So why do, why is this listed as a corporate discipline? I have questions. Surely God knows if I confess my sins, that should be okay, right? I said, God, forgive me, my, my bad, Lord. And I could have just be about my way. But the way sin is set up, the way sin is set up, there's actually two forms of confession. There definitely is confession between you and God because that's how we get a right relationship between God. Amen? Y'all following me? Confessing our sins, repenting. These are things that we don't talk about a lot. Repent means that you're totally changing your direction. You're going a whole nother way. Uh, um, being sorrowful, being really remorseful, like that was really messed up what I did, my bad, right? Trusting, and then not only that, but you're trusting the finished work of Jesus. When you're confessing your sin, you are believing that you serve a God who loves you and forgives you and paid a price to forgive you, right? Y'all with me? Ain't how many glad for the, for the forgiveness of God? This is the God we serve. Isn't it amazing that we don't have a God that just holds it over our heads perpetually? God really doesn't have that lightning bolt you thought he had, right? That this is what we do. We confess, I am a sinner, Lord, and I am nothing without you. And without you, I'm capable to do anything. How, does anyone believe that? You got to believe that about yourself. Lord, without you... Huh. I do. Uh, y'all might be visiting me, send putting number send some on my books. I don't know. Without God, really, we are literally capable of doing the things that you look down on other people for. This is where the grace of God comes in. First John 1 9, we know it. It says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us washes us from all unrighteousness. And that word in this verse, uh, uh, if we confess, it's a Greek word. It's on the, it'll be on, the, um, on our display. It's a Greek word. The Greek word for confession is homologeo. Homologeo. It's the Greek word for confession. I love this because it means for us to say the same thing as. So when you confess your sins, you're agreeing with God. I'm saying the same thing that God is saying about me. I'm going to say the same thing that God is saying about my sin. I'm going to say the same. We're speaking the same language. I'm not saying, well, you did this. Well, that was their fault, and that was, I got this excuse, and it was really because, no, God, I'm going to say the same thing that you're saying. That was wrong. That was on me. I did that. So true confession, the true spiritual discipline of confession goes beyond simply admitting that you have sinned. Confession is saying the same thing about your sin that God says. Can I get an amen? Without confession, we are playing a solitary game of hide and seek with God. You playing it all by yourself. Because God's not playing games and God's not hiding from you. Without, without confession, you just ducking and dodging, hoping that an all-seeing God doesn't see you. We, I don't know how we make sense of this. Hope God don't see me in this club. Be like, what? You know, that's just our logic. We, you know, we be, we be on other stuff sometimes. Um, there are times in our lives where we need to own up to our own behavior. Amen. All right, or are we working on our self-awareness? 
Are we working on who we are and just taking some deep reflections? We have to own up to our behavior and repent because this is what spiritual maturity looks like. A kid, a two-year-old, can't, they're not always capable of, of really being sorry. They'll say sorry because you told them to say sorry. Say sorry, sorry. You know, your siblings and your cousin be like, they didn't mean it. Yeah, you know. But when we're maturing in Christ, we are able to have self-reflection. We're able to say, you know what? That was on me. That was, that, um, that was my bad. Amen? So y'all, y'all, y'all with me? We wanted to mature. We wanted to grow. These could be hard conversations, but this is how we could be rooted. So we talked about private confession. Now, the second half is corporate confession, which is pretty foreign to us in this modern time. A corporate confession was once a big part of church history. If you look at our church history, um, especially in the times before the Refora Reformation, the practice of confessing to a priest was something that most of the people had to do. It was in the Catholic Church in Europe. You had to go confess to a priest, and they took a, the scripture, like to confess your faults to one another, they took it to the limit. It was like anything, any sin, you got to tell it to a priest. The problem is it, become, it became corrupt. So they began to sell these confessions. You had to pay for your penance. You had to pay for your indulgences. And you had to, and that was making the church rich. How do you think they were able to colonize all over the place? They had money in the bank because they was like, oh, you sin? Yeah, yeah. Come on, pay me. You need to pay for that sin. Come on, give me that. So it became such a corrupt system. That's when Martin Luther came, nailed the 95 Thesis on the church door, and a part of that declaration was Martin Luther declaring and calling for the practice of private confession. Like, actually, in the Bible, it says that, that Jesus is now our high priest, and that we don't need a priest to intercede for us. I can actually just go to God for myself and say, God, I'm sorry, and God actually hears and forgives me. I didn't need a middleman. How many are grateful you don't need a middleman? I don't need a middleman. Jesus paid it all and took care of it. So from that time, that's where the Protestants became uh, a thing. So then you had the Protestants, you had the Catholics. Catholics, as you may well know, still hold to the practice of confession. You could go to a confessional, you could talk to your priest, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, and you could just say all your things, and they'll say you are forgiven, they do all the things. So on the Protestant side, we've moved away from that, like we don't need homeboy, right? But somewhere, we did lose something very vital. We went too far on the pendulum. We gotta find some middle ground. We went all the way to there's no confession at all between the saints. Y'all agree with me? We know that because church hurt is real. How many people have experienced church hurt, saw church hurt, lived through church hurt? We know that church hurt is real because often we have not mastered the practice of confession, one to another, right? We actually need a both and. And doing life in a community of human beings will always be messy, no matter where you are doing life with human beings. Amen? Y'all know that on your job? You got a bunch of human beings, and they get on your nerves? Your school, your people. <laughs> I got a strong amen on that. At home, y'all don't I know. Y'all might be sitting next to them, so just look straight ahead. Just act like, act like, hmm, they're interesting. <laughs> At home, people get on your nerves. At the grocery, ooh, Lord, Costco. So deliver me, Jesus. That's where I need the Holy Ghost. When I go to Costco at 12 noon on a Saturday, Lord, why'd I do it, Jesus? Why they walk so slow? As a family. Who I'm just trying to get to the samples. Okay. I went too far, sorry. We, wherever we're, there are human beings, it will be messy. Y'all get that? 
everywhere. So when we come, we are striving for this church to be a community. We want to do life together. We want to be the place where we come, you know, where everybody knows your name. It's cheers. We're trying to be a, a, a we trying to do life together. But there are two really big misconceptions that keep us from this. One, we often believe and view the church as a fellowship of saints before we see it as a fellowship of sinners. We superimpose the saints. Yes, we washed in the blood, sanctified, saved by God, redeemed. Yes, and we're also a group of recovering sinners. We, you've heard it so many times that this is not the showroom, but this is a hospital. This is where the wounded come. This is where we come where we need help. We need stitched up. I come leaking and bleeding out on you and, and doing all kind of stuff. I come with, with, you know, things that are not so pleasant on me and, and smelling not the best and all these things. This is what this place is for. This is what this place is for. This is for, and then we get mad like they supposed to be the church. In there lying. In there talking about each other. In there, she, you know, she didn't even say hi to me. I've seen it all, child. People be mad like she did. She walked right by me, didn't say hi. Right? But we are a community of human beings, right? Growing and nurse. That was a big man. And the next misconception that we usually have is that my sin only affects me. I ain't hurt nobody. Let me do what I want to do. Let me do my thing. Right? We just out here doing whatever we want to, but we all know in truth that sin is a ripple effect. May not see it, but it's affecting someone. So how can we do this in community? This is why we're rooted. This is why this is a spiritual discipline. We are practicing being in community together, and if we're going to do that, we have to master confession. We got to practice it. This is what this whole thing has been about. We got to practice. You don't do it one time. You do it all the time. You do it. It's an intentional way that we express our love for each other. We got to be quick. How do we practice confession? We must be quick to confess and quick to forgive. You got to keep count short accounts. Keep short accounts. This is a slide. You can keep short accounts with one another. That means you, you can't bring up that list from uh, 1987. Be like, I still remember when she didn't put my punch out. She didn't. We keeping these long lists. Keep short accounts. Guard against a spirit of offense. Boy, help us, Jesus. Help us not to be so easily offended. God, this is my prayer. Every day. I want to be so unbothered. I thought, Lord, just graced me to be so. Somebody do something out of pocket. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But it doesn't affect me. It doesn't, it doesn't get deep inside of me. It doesn't make me be like, oh, man, I ain't going to never say hi to her no more. When we do so easy to love, I'm going to the other side. We can't. We got to guard against that and not holding grudges, not holding grudges. Do you know this is going to take the spirit of the living God living inside of us to do these things? This is what makes this community different than your work community. Because the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And what should it be? Easy. So, ooh, so easy. This is our practice. So I had a chance uh, this past week to go be a part of a tree planting. It was like so good. I'm like an environmentalist now. And we went to go plant trees near Yosemite. Um, so actually, they had professional tree planters like there, and we were just kind of assisting them. But it was amazing before we could plant the trees, a group of us had to go around and do some weeding. Because during this season, so many, you know, weeds has popped up, and they had just got a little light rain, so they were easy to pull up, which I was like, ooh, this is a whole sermon in itself. Because those little, uh, these, these weeds, they look so big, and they look like they were really intimidating, came up like you just pull them, and they just had no weight to them. But then there were some 
that mimicked those trees. They were trying to look like the tree. They were trying to be around the tree. They were trying to get in the roots of the trees. We got to do some weeding in our hearts. This is what confession does. It gets the weeds out. The things that want to look like it's the real, but it's not. The things they, those things were so easy to pull up. I was just, you, I was, I thought I was doing something because they were big and majestic and beautiful, but they had no substance. They were easy to pull up. Now there were some that were stubborn. I will say that we had to go a whole thing, and that's what happens when we let grudges, offense, and we keep long accounts with people. It sets up deep and it's hard to pull up. Hard to pull up. So this is why we are keeping short accounts. Hebrews, Hebrews 12. Y'all hope y'all writing this down. Y'all taking notes. Y'all going to need this later. I'm trying to tell you, child. All right. Hebrews 12. It says, pursue peace with how many people? A few people? Everybody. Pursue peace with everybody and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. It is so important that we keep our hearts free of the weeds of bitterness Pulling up anything that wants to root itself when you get offended, when somebody, this, I'm talking about community, I'm talking about us, because as we are together as human beings, we're going to get on each other's nerves, I just want you to know that. We're going to be short with each other, we're going to, we're going to, I got a witness already, Lord. We're going to be, you know, sometimes it's just not your day, you're just like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it. We cannot let roots of bitterness spring up, Amen. So, what does confession actually look like? And I'm out your way. And this is, I want to say this. This is for our community going forward. All right? I know there's, when we start talking about confession and these things, it makes you want to look backwards. And you start thinking about all the people in your past and all the hurts of your past. And that's why we have therapists. And that's why we have pastoral counseling. We can deal with all that. Yes, we're going to do it together. But in this context, I want us to talk about going forward. Because we're praying for revival. We're praying for a harvest. And when people come in here, how are we going to act? How are we going to treat people? How are we going to, this is why we're going forward. We got to go forward. We got to, all right, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Y'all what, y'all listening? My brother, brother, you, you with me, brother? Brother, you with me? Mm-hmm, yep, you want, you want, we preaching together. Yeah, we preaching together. All right. So, how going forward, how are we going to conduct ourselves as a community? This is what, um, go to the slide about con, what uh, confession is. Confession is... Number one, it's specific. It's specific. Speaking in specifics is superior to speaking in generalities. Right? We got to, if we commit specific sins, we need to confess them specifically. So we do come across each other, and we do tend to do something uh, to get on each other's nerve. It's very important that you be specific. And what you're saying, hey, I'm so sorry I was short with you the other day. Not just, I'm sorry if you thought that I was doing something because I'm sorry if you took that the wrong way. That's not, that's not community. Let's get specific. Uh, two, confess the consequences. True confession involves looking not just at the sin we commit, but how it affected us and how it affected other people. The devil didn't do everything. We can't put the devil be like, who, me? We've surprised the devil sometime. he would be like, oh, what'd I do? Oh, Linda, I'll take credit for that. I didn't even do that. It was a result of our own consequences, right? God is, a, let me tell you something, child. God forgives sin. Amen, anybody believe that? But consequences are natural. Consequences are are a part of life. He'll for, God will forgive you, forgiven all day, but we don't have to live with these consequences, good or bad. There are both good and bad consequences. So when we are sitting, when we're sitting in consequences, don't blame it on nobody else. 
Let's just confess. You know what? I'm in this situation because I made a bad decision. That, it, it, it's okay. It's okay. How many made a bad decision? Look, we in good company. Oh, Lord. So many. So many. Look at it. You thought you was the only one. Look at all the cloud of witnesses we got in here. This is why we need community. Because you need to know that you're not alone. Okay, next. Confession precedes forgiveness. What comes first, forgiveness or confession? Confession. It proceeds forgiveness. You can't just ask somebody to forgive you. I'm sorry. And we didn't even talk about the offense. Confession comes first. Remember you, your mom used to say that? Be like, um, say sorry. Sorry, for what? They either make you go into, what you saying sorry for? What you do? Right? So we have to first, first thing comes first, confess. Confess. This is all a part of us maturing, owning up. It's time for us to own up to things, right? We're maturing. The next one, confess before someone we have harmed. This is part of restorative justice, righting the wrongs, repairing harm. If you've caused harm to someone, we got to confess it. We do. Be like, I'm so sorry I did that to you. Yeah, that was me. It's okay. She want to preach with me. It's okay. Come on, you want to preach too? Yeah. <laughs> she all right. And the next one, confession before other believers. And this is the point I'm trying to get to. At times, it will be wise to confess our sins before a friend or a other trusted individual. This person can then pray with us, pray for us, and help us to believe in God's assurance and forgiveness. And the key word is a trusted individual. Sometimes you can't keep it all isolated. Sometimes you can't hold it all inside. Sometimes there are times where like, oh, well, yeah, you might want to, y'all want to get the baby. Thank you. There might be some times where you are going to have to talk to somebody, a trusted person. Now, this is our question in community, will you be a trusted person? If someone were to come to you, will you be trusted and not be like, child, and heard some tea at the church? Or guise it as a prayer request, we need to pray. We need to pray, we need to have a special prayer meeting because we're praying for sis because, who child, she in a mess. Like, we, we, sometimes we, we turn prayer requests into gossip. Yeah. Yeah. Tell it, tell it, tell and we want to be a safe, we want this community to be so safe. We want this to be a safe community where anyone could come here and hear the word, where anyone can feel like they belong, where people are free from feeling harassed, People are free from feeling like they're going to get hit on. They, you know, feel from, free from sexual harassment, free from molestation, free from judgment, free from coming in here and feeling like, oh, I don't fit in. We want this to be a safe place. And this happens in community. That's why we got to confess. We got to be quick, quick, quick to confess. So the benefits of confession. Confession, we already know, is good for the soul. He ever got something out, you just had to say it out loud, and once you said it out loud, you'd be like, whoo, that felt so good. I lied, and I just had to tell somebody, right? Like, it feels good to get it out. Confession is good for the soul. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, no one who conceals transgressions will prosper, but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. That is a powerful scripture. Verbalizing our confession has the power to free us from strongholds of sickness and sin and isolation and torment. Sharing our struggle with someone we trust and receiving their unconditional love, acceptance, grace, it assures us that we are not alone and that we are loved. This is what confession does. It heals us. It frees us because there is healing in confession. Come on, can you say that there is healing in confession? You think I'm making that up, huh? Nope, it's a scripture forward. James 5. 
It's a little long, but we got this. We got this. This is so interesting because we usually only read the, the, uh, the 16th verse. We usually only read, but if we read this in context, it is so powerful. It says, are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. We'd be like, oh, yes, you sick. Come on. But then it says the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be what? 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that what? What? You may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So you telling me that perhaps my healing is connected to my confession? That's powerful. So maybe that thing that's inside of you was just eating you up, giving you all kind of anxiety and depression, giving you all kind of, you know, they have the researchers now that's saying that there's so many things linked to cancer, like anger, like unforgiveness, like holding on to things. So you telling me that if I confess it, that it actually frees me. It actually frees me up for healing. This is how I could get healing when I confess my sins, when I let it go, when I say, you know what, I've really been dealing with this, and I need you to pray for me. God says that there is healing in that. Sit in there. There's healing in that. So it all comes down to this. There is freedom and healing in confession. And if we're going to do life together, this has to be our community norm here at The Way. Amen? It's our community norm. We're going to confess quickly. We're going to forgive quickly. We're going to be trusted resources. How many is, are down for that? I'm down for that. I want to, and you know, you can only feel like you want to confess when you're in a safe place. So this is what we want to be. If we going forward as we're doing life together, be quick to be own up to whatever you did. Be quick to be like, that's my bad. Sorry, sis. My, my bad, bro. I didn't mean that. And then be quick to forgive. So on our closing reflection, look, we, we almost out of here. Closing reflection, and I'm going to get out the way. I know y'all like to take your little pictures. As we close, I want you to think through the steps you need to take to put confession into action in a specific instance. For example, what can you do to improve your confessional life and relationship with Christ and others? That's a great question to think about. How can I really live this out? Lord, I won't be so prideful that I can't admit when I made a mistake. I won't be so wanting to have my way all the time that I don't make room for others' opinions. The second one is commit to be a trustworthy and confidential bearer of the confessions of others, an agent of forgiveness. These are the things we want to sit with, not only in this community, but also in your personal life. Be quick to confess. It's so good to be free. You ever been free of something and it, it, didn't, it didn't weigh you down no more? And you used to be filled with regret and remorse. And then one day you was like, you know what? I'm free from that. I'm not that person. I've outgrown that. I'm not the person who did that. I'm better. I'm wiser. I'm getting stronger. And none of those things really hold you anything. That's such a good place to be. So come on, let's stand to our feet. And let's just pray as we close out our time, that God would truly use us. I just want you to do some reflection between God and yourself. As we are doing life together in this community, come on, will you say, God, use me. God, use me in this community. Lord, we come before you. God, we literally want to be agents of your grace. God, I pray that you will grace us with this discipline of confession. God, I pray that you would take out everything that's not like you. God, we say that we are sorry. We repent 
from anything that has been holding us back, any pride, any, any, any selfishness. God, we pray that you would cleanse us and purify us. And God, I pray that you would give us the wherewithal to own our mistakes, to own and have self-reflection. God, will you use us, God, to be able to not take ourselves so seriously. God, when we do wrong, let us admit it. And we're praying that this will be a place of grace, that people will be quick to confess, quick to forgive, keep short accounts, not easily offended, that we don't hold grudges. And this is what will make this community so different from every other place in people's lives. This is the place where we will feel God's love, that we will feel like we belong, that we feel seen, that we feel unconditionally cared for. So God, we pray your grace over us. Now, if you wanna be an agent of change, will you just lift your hands before God and say, God, Lord, I pray that you would use me. God, help me to confess and help me to be someone who is trustworthy. God, help me to add to this community and not take from it. God, do what only you can do, God, in my heart and in my life. Come on, now we need to pray about the past. There are things in our past, God, and I pray that you will give us freedom from it, that we will receive your forgiveness and then give that same forgiveness to others. So God, we lift our hands before you. Come on, say, I receive your forgiveness, Lord. I receive it, I receive it. I'm just still, and if there's anything that you need to repent of, come on, I want you to bring it to mind and say, God, I repent. I repent. Come on, we need to do some, some quick weeding in our hearts. God, take up the weeds. Take up the weeds. Take it up. Take it up. Take it up. Come on, any unforgiveness. Come on, just begin to see yourself taking up the weeds. Taking up the weeds in our lives. Taking it up. Yes, Lord. Come on, sit in that. Yes, come on, let's sit in that. Let's sit in that. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. How many are glad for forgiveness? <laughs> Come on, this is, I love, in that there was a book I was reading that said, every time of confession should end in joy. We don't walk around perpetually condemned or be like, man, I really did mess up. No, 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 no. When we are walking in God, every time we confess, and every time we come before God or we come before our, 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 our loved ones, we end in joy. So come on, let's just end in joy. God, we thank you. God, we pray a spirit of joy will come upon us, a spirit of peace, a spirit of forgiveness. The enemy wants us to walk around condemned and looking backwards, but God, we thank you that we're able to go forward. Everything in you is forward. So we thank you, God, for your joy. We walk out of here resolute knowing that you're going to root us and plant us like a rivers, like a tree by the streams of river, living water. So we give you this time. If there's anyone here who says, I do not know about this Jesus that you speak of, because all of this is only benefits of knowing Jesus. Amen. How many know from someone who does not know the Lord, they, they don't have any of these benefits. But if you are here and you say, you know what, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to do something very bold. I'm going to ask you to meet me here at this altar. If you say, I want to know Jesus, I need to know him for myself. I want you to meet me at this altar. And if there's no one here 
who is making that step. If you are looking for a church home and you're like, you know what, I might like this church. This is your opportunity too. If there's anyone here who would like to join the way, this is your time. We will love you. We will clap for you. We'll be excited about you. And I told you, y'all, I'm moving into a new dimension. We're not doing no more secret handshakes. If you want to come, you're going to come in front of everybody. And we're going to be bold because it takes a bold spirit in this, in this day and age, right? So if you want Jesus, meet me here. If you want a church, meet me here. If not, we all in the family. Come on, clap it up for the family. We're so glad to be in community together.